So last week we built a gaming PC for around $700, uh, more specifically an Intel gaming PC. And a lot of you guys were disappointed by that because we didn't go with a Ryzen uh, config. But if you pay close attention at the end of that video, I mentioned how I was gonna compare that Intel system to an AMD based system for about the same price to see what the performance differences are uh, in gaming and some other tests. I've picked my parts for AMD and I've ran my benchmarks and looking at those numbers, it, it really is eye-opening and I think I've come up with a better conclusion. So, why don't we uh, take a look at that, but first, a quick message from our sponsor. The Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX from ASRock is the perfect compact motherboard to pair with your Intel 9th gen CPU. With its robust VRM design and higher quality MOSFETs, it's guaranteed for the best overclocking experience, plus you get an M.2 heatsink, next-gen Wi-Fi support, and a higher quality DAC built-in. Check it out down below. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on the parts list that I use for the Intel build. The CPU is the Core i5-9400F. It features six cores without hyperthreading. For memory, I went with Corsair Vengeance 16 gigabyte LPX kit clocked at 2666 MHz. The motherboard of choice was the ASRock B365M Phantom Gaming 4. For storage, I went with the Silicon Power A80 512GB NVMe SSD. GPU of choice was the EVGA GTX 1660 SC Ultra. And powering the entire hardware, was the Corsair CX450M power supply, and all of this was enclosed inside the Fantex P300 case. The total cost of the system was around $700 when we bought them, but around $692 when you include the mail-in rebates. So we decided to put together an AMD Ryzen-based PC for the exact same price, and this is what we came up with. The CPU of choice is the Ryzen 5 2600. It features six cores, 12 threads, and it's unlocked, which means we could overclock it slightly to see if it would make any difference. Plus it can be picked up for $118, which is $27 cheaper than the Core i5-9400F. We decided to stick with the same memory kit from Corsair just to keep up with the price. And for motherboard, we went with the MSI B450 Tomahawk. It's priced at $112, which is $26 more compared to the B365 Phantom Gaming 4, from ASRock. Generally, B450 motherboards are a bit pricier compared to B365 or B360 motherboards. And the trade-off is that you actually get overclocking support with B450 as well as more uh, features and connectivity. The remaining components are basically a copy and paste from the Intel build. So that includes the SSD, the power supply, the graphics card, and the case. So after gathering price points from these two systems, I gotta say, they even out. I'm sure you can replace the motherboard with something cheaper to bring down the cost, and there are a million combinations that you can go with. Now, please do keep in mind that the prices that you're seeing here will likely not be the same when you're shopping around for another time for the exact same components because they do tend to fluctuate over time. Uh, now, some online retailers do tend to bundle uh, the CPU and the motherboard. Uh, in fact, you could pick up an AMD B450 motherboard and an AMD processor for a really good deal and save some dollars and spend that budget towards uh, potentially a better cooling solution or maybe a better graphics card. Now, before I get into the performance results, I do want to take this time to appreciate AMD's Wraith Stealth Cooler that comes with the CPU. It looks a lot, and I mean a lot better than this ugly Intel stock cooling solution. I mean, the design on this Intel cooler has been the same for the past decade, and that is unacceptable. They better address this really fast, and please, no ketchup and mustard cables. I also ran a noise test on both these coolers to see which one does a better job with the acoustic performance, and surprisingly, the RAID Stealth does a better job at cooling the processor, so that is definitely a bonus. So here is the final AMD build, and I love the way how it looks. The Stealth cooler really makes a world of difference, if you were to ask me. Uh, the Tomahawk board also blends in with the case pretty well. And all around, I really can't complain about the system. And now, the moment that you've been waiting for, performance. How do these two CPUs stack up with each other, especially in gaming and other tasks? Well, before I get into that, I do want to mention that I did manage to overclock the Ryzen 5 2600 to 3.8 GHz on all cores at 1.275. I don't really want to push it too high because the stock cooler isn't a robust cooling solution for extreme overclocking. Now, I did want to compare the Intel build to three different settings on the AMD PC because with Intel, it's just one setting and that is stock. You really can't overclock the processor because it's locked. It is kind of a bummer. So the three different settings for the AMD build is basically stock and then stock with an overclocked or faster memory speed and the overclocked Ryzen 5 2600 with the faster memory kit. I do want to emphasize that the price difference between the Corsair 2666 MHz kit and the Corsair 3000 MHz kit is only $3. Starting with Cinebench R15 and R20, the Ryzen 5 2600 takes the lead here over the 9400F, 
and that was expected given those extra threads. However, single core performance did take a hit because Intel was able to achieve higher clock speeds, swapping the memory for a 3000 MHz kit didn't really do all that much. However, overclocking the 2600 did help improve performance across all of these tests. As you can see, with Blender, it shaved over 30 seconds, which is pretty impressive. Cinebench runs definitely get a boost, including Geekbench as well, but unfortunately, single core performance is still not AMD's strong suit compared to Intel. That's just the way how it is. And now on to the content creation side of things. Uh, I actually decided to not run Adobe Premiere this time, but instead utilize DaVinci Resolve Studio just because, personally speaking, I've ditched Adobe Premiere a really long time ago just because of the crazy glitches and all that kind of stuff that I've been experiencing with my personal system. So ever since the switch to Resolve, it has been a flawless experience. And what's surprising to me is that running Resolve on both the AMD and the Intel system was flawless. I mean, I did not experience stutters or crashes. Playback was absolutely smooth. It rendered videos faster, a lot faster than I thought. And as you can see, the Core i5 CPU rendered our 10 minute 4K project to H.265 in six minutes and 14 seconds, whereas the Ryzen 5 2600 took an extra 15 seconds to complete the render. I know what you're thinking, shouldn't the Ryzen CPU be a lot faster because it has six cores and 12 threads and the Intel should be a lot slower because it doesn't have hyper threading? Well, technically yes, but I think I may have an explanation for this because as I was monitoring CPU utilization, I noticed that the Intel CPU was clocked significantly higher, reaching four gigahertz on all six cores, and utilizing 100%, uh, but with the Ryzen CPU, all cores were not even boosting past 3.6 gigahertz, and the utilization was not even reaching 90%. It was around 80 to around 90%. So that was something that I wanted to point out, which is probably why there is a bit of a difference between the two, but I mean, that being said, it is a close call, and I just realized that you can actually edit video on both these systems can't really complain about them. And now on to gaming. I ran all of these benchmarks at 1080p, and as you can see, the majority of the games that I play favor the Core i5-9400F, like Battlefield 1, Overwatch, Far Cry 5, and Warhammer 2, whereas the Ryzen 5 2600 takes the slightest edge over Intel in Apex Legends and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but it's nothing significant. Even overclocking the Ryzen CPU barely improved performance. The new Hydro X series from Corsair is a full water cooling ecosystem with transparent blocks for RGB goodness and built-in flow indicators with soft and hard tubing available and the full array of fittings so you can design the perfect loop for you. Hydro X by Corsair. Everything's linked below. So the numbers really do speak for themselves and honestly guys, I can't pick a winner between these two systems because they gave me an amazing gaming experience overall. Until I actually started benchmarking them, I was able to tell which one was actually faster because Intel did take the lead in some titles. Then again, AMD was not too far behind. I didn't have an issue gaming on it. I still had fun. And I think that's the takeaway from this whole comparison because it's amazing that we have competition and it's great that we have all this vast selection of hardware that we can pick and choose and uh, you know, kind of build around with. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong going with both these platforms. It's all about having a good time. I mean, you just want to hop into a gameplay. I mean, sure, you benchmark them just to make sure that your hardware is running right, but you don't benchmark them every single time when you're playing a game. You just want to get in and have some fun. That being said, I was surprised by the Core i5 processor and its performance with DaVinci Resolve Studio 16 just because those six physical cores actually do mean something. Now, I'm not really sure what the story would be like when you switch over to Adobe Premiere because it doesn't have IGP, so that could certainly prolong the rendering time. But if you look at something like Blender, the Ryzen definitely takes the edge over Intel because those threads do come in handy and the difference is significant between the two. So this, this has certainly opened my eyes and it's been an interesting journey comparing both Intel and AMD. And I'm glad that I did it because um, you know, this is, this is great. It's just great. Let me know what you guys think about this comparison, guys. I mean, which one would you pick in the comments down below? I just want to know your thoughts about it. In fact, if you have any other combinations that uh, you would perhaps like us to try, actually, if you want us to challenge ourselves to build something less than $500, I don't know, maybe we should. That'd be interesting. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on a new video. I'm Ebro with Hydro Connects, signing off, and I'll talk to you guys 
in the next one.